Hello everyone, I am Nohamed Bouli, lecturer of parasitology at Faculty of Medicine, Cairo University, and I am interested in drawings and animation, and in this playlist I will try to make the immunology so simple and easy. Let's start. What is the immune system? The immune system is our army that defends us in front of different microbes, viruses, bacteria, protozoa, fungi, helminthes, and this occurs in different ways that are suitable in every situation. Sometimes the immune system fails, however, it succeeds hundreds of times every day. And let's see how. The immune system is composed of many cells, antibodies, humoral factors like complement system, and the cytokines. Cytokines are the messengers connecting between the immune cells. And let's be more specific and classify the immune system into cells, cells that are white blood cells, and the lymphoid organs in which synthesis and activation of the immune cells occur. White blood cells are classified into granulocytes, monocytes, and the lymphocytes. Granulocytes that contain granules and the granules are bags of toxic, toxic products and mediators that can be secreted onto organisms, and they are neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Neutrophils are the most important cells combating bacteria, and they are the pus-forming cells. Also, neutrophil is one of the phagocytic cells. The second granulocyte is eosinophil. Xenophils are the most important helminths combating cells. They secrete toxic products to digest the wall of the worm. And the last granulocyte is basophil. Basophils are the cells responsible for allergy. Basophils are found in blood, and the tissue resident form of them is called mast cells. The mediators that secreted from basophils and the mast cells. Granules cause allergic manifestations that help the body to get rid of microbes like diarrhea and the cough. And those are the granulocytes. The second important cells are monocytes. They are the main phagocytic cells, monocytes and macrophages. Monocytes which are found in blood and the macrophages that are found in tissues. The main function of macrophage is phagocytosis. The other very important function is antigen presenting cell. Antigen presentation. The T lymphocytes to start forming an effect against certain microbe, it must first identify this microbe. Certain cells like macrophages act as antigen presenting cell. It engulfs the microbe, digests it, and presents certain small parts of the microbe called antigens on its surface attached to certain receptors. And this complex of antigen attached to receptor on the surface of macrophage can activate the T lymphocyte to start function, and this is called antigen presentation. Also, macrophage can secrete toxic products onto worms to kill them. And now, let's talk about the cells that are responsible for the acquired immunity, the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes target only specific microbes and they are very efficient in killing them. We have T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes. T lymphocytes, they are three types, T helper cells. The main function of T helper cells is producing cytokines. Cytokines are messengers that regulate the actions of all immune cells. The second is T cytotoxic cells. The main function of T cytotoxic cell is killing abnormal cells. Abnormal cells? What are the abnormal cells in our body? They are either a tumor cell or virus infected cell. They target certain cells and each T cytotoxic cell can only identify and kill a specific abnormal cell. Only one specific abnormal cell. The third T cell is natural killer cell. Natural killer cells act also in killing abnormal cells. However, natural killer cell kills any abnormal cell. It is not specific to any cell. So, it is a part of the innate immunity. And they can act early in disease before the development of the acquired immunity. But of course, the T-cytotoxic cell is more powerful and more efficient than the natural killer cell in killing abnormal cells. 
Lastly, the B lymphocytes. The main function of B lymphocytes is to produce antibodies in blood and the tissue fluids. So, they are responsible for the humoral immunity against mainly extracellular organisms. And those are the white blood cells of the immune system. Let's talk about the lymphoid organs. The lymphoid organs are either primary or secondary. Primary or central lymphoid organs in which maturation of B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes occurs. We are the bone marrow, which is the site of synthesis of the whole white blood cells, and also the site for the B lymphocytes maturation, and the thymus gland, which is the site of the T lymphocytes maturation. The secondary lymphoid organs or the peripheral lymphoid organs are the sites where B and the T lymphocytes meet different microbes. If any microbe enter our body, it will be drained by lymph to these organs where B and the T lymphocytes are there waiting for them. These organs are spleen, lymph nodes in different parts of the body, gut associated lymphoid tissue including tonsils, adenoids, appendix and pyrus patches and the bronchial associated lymphoid tissue. Now, let's tell the story of B and the T cells activation. Once upon a time, the bone marrow produced a T lymphocyte and a B lymphocyte. They are still baby and couldn't do effect. The T lymphocyte went to thymus gland where it became mature T lymphocyte and the B lymphocyte completed its maturation in the bone marrow. The B and the T lymphocytes became mature. However, they still naive and not activated and couldn't do any effect. They were secreted in blood and each one of them is carrying a specific receptor that can identify only a certain microbe. They went to a lymph node and they sat there waiting for this certain microbe. One day, microbes that carry certain antigens specific to the receptors on the surfaces of those B and the T lymphocytes entered the body and were drained to the lymph node where the B and the T lymphocytes were waiting. B and the T lymphocytes identified them and started the process of completing their activation. First, they activated and proliferate to form a, a clone of identical B and the T cells specific to this microbe and carrying the same receptors. Second, they are differentiated into effector B cells and the T cells. And now they can do an effect. They are no longer naive. The T cell is now ready to kill abnormal cell or to secrete cytokines. And the B cell is now ready to produce antibodies. Lastly, they form memory cells. Memory cells are ready to kill the certain microbe the next time he visits the body more rapidly and more effectively. Now, we have two main types of immunity. Both are important and they collaborate to help our body to get rid of any microbe innate immunity and acquired immunity. Innate immunity that is present in all people since birth and acquired immunity or specific immunity that is associated with exposure to certain microbe and so it is present only in people who were exposed to this microbe. The innate immunity and the cells working in it are non-specific. They attack any microbe they meet. However, the T and the B lymphocytes responsible for the acquired immunity attack only specific microbes following the exposure to them. The innate immunity is present in all individuals since birth and it acts immediately following the exposure to any microbe. The acquired immunity takes time to develop, however, the acquired immunity is more specific, more powerful and more efficient than the innate immunity. <coughs> which is important only in the beginning of the disease till the acquired immunity develops. And here we came to the end of the first video. Thank you for listening.